Police in Houston, Texas released a video that shows the lead up to a man allegedly running over his ex-girlfriend three times, leaving her dead in the street. Officers say the man, a previously deported Salvadorian illegal immigrant, also ran over three men who were standing near her at the time. Houston police officers responded to a call on Telephone Road in the southwest part of the city Sunday morning at 2.10 a.m. A man driving a Ford F-150 pickup truck reportedly ran over a woman who was his ex-girlfriend three times. He also allegedly struck three other men who were standing nearby. According to information provided by Texas HPD Media Relations, the video shows the moments leading up to the alleged assaults and murder. Police officers initially identified the driver as Rigo Beto Alexander Escobar and said he is about 35 years old. Investigators say they believe Escobar may have seen his ex-girlfriend, 36-year-old Dixie Reyes, crossing the street toward JoJo's Club. Witnesses said the driver ran over the woman and the men. Officials with the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement confirmed that the Salvadorian national now identified by ICE as Roberto Caballero Escobar is a previously deported illegal immigrant. ICE previously removed Roberto Escobar on June 10, 2005, after he illegally entered the United States near Tucson, Arizona. An ICE official said he was removed to Guatemala as an expected removal after he lied to immigration officials regarding his country of origin. He illegally re-entered the United States after his removal, which is a felony. Court records obtained from Harris County District Clerk's website show that Roberto Escobar identified in Harris County records as Riberberto Caballero Escobar who remains in Harris County Jail on five criminal charges. Those charges include murder, three accounts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and driving while intoxicated. Family members told the local ABC affiliate that the suspect was dating the woman for about five years. They said there was a history of domestic violence in the relationship. Dixie Reros, the girlfriend of the illegal immigrant, leaves behind four children. And yet, here is a perfect example of what I always talk about. And that is that we have a really screwed up immigration system in America. You have to have a pretty bad immigration system when you have this criminal illegal immigrant being deported and then most likely immediately coming right back. Because the article stated that he was arrested and deported back in 2005. And I am more than confident in saying that this guy came back almost immediately right back into the country. But it wasn't only him. Like he's not the only one who's ever done this before. There is plenty of stories that I have covered about illegal immigrants being deported and then coming right back in. In fact, I think there was an illegal immigrant who was deported, came right back into America, and then he ended up killing a NFL player. Which ironically, the NFL never said a peep about that. And this is no fault being blamed on ICE officers and immigration agencies. The fault lies with the immigration system as a whole and how easy it is to apparently come back into America after you've been deported. Now you hear liberals and Democrats talk all day long about how difficult it is for these poor illegal immigrants to migrate from their crappy country to this country. And yet you have these stories of these illegal immigrants, criminal illegal immigrants in a lot of cases coming back to America after being previously deported. Just like that illegal immigrant who killed Kate Stylin. It was a big, big, big story back a few years ago, and it was because he was an illegal immigrant who has been deported multiple times. I think it was like four times that he was deported. And each time, you know, he was deported and he came back. And this guy had already criminal charges against him. And in fact, a lot of these illegal immigrants who come to America are no flower children. They're not the innocent, poor people that the liberal Democrats try to call them up to be. In fact, a lot of them have criminal records. A lot of them have connections with the cartels. A lot of them are cartels members themselves. And yet, you know, the Democrats will advocate to let these people in to the country in mass numbers. And this is how I know that the Democrats just really don't care. Because the Democrats are the ones who are advocating for these people. Yet they have to be completely dumb or completely arrogant to the consequences of mass migration. Not only the economic consequences of mass migration leading to low wages, but also the social dynamics and consequences of mass mass migration. And in cases like this with this Roberto Escobar guy 
who ran over his girlfriend. You have illegal immigrants constantly doing this kind of stuff and then being deported and then being right back into the country the next day. And again, it really shows a fault into our immigration system as a whole and a prime example of why we need that border built. But not only do we need a border wall, we need guards at that border. We need people guarding that border every square mile. And not just border patrol agents, I mean military gunmen at that border, patrolling it and guarding it. We also need lights, cameras, motion detectors, and I still think alligator pits is a good move to have at the border. But unfortunately that would never happen because we would get crap from the UN for being a human rights abuse and yada yada yada. Humanitarian bullcrap. But what can we do about our immigration system? Okay, here is my proposals. I believe that for every illegal immigrant that we have to deport or house, that that bill should be charged to Mexico or be taken out of the $415 million that we give them in aid money every year. Which means, yeah, don't stop the aid money we give them. Fine, whatever. They need it for who only knows what. I'm just saying that out of that $415 million that we give them, we simply take out some of that money for deportation costs, housing costs, court costs of these illegal immigrants, feeding costs, general fines, and that's pretty much it. So maybe at the end of all that, maybe Mexico gets 20, 15 million, and we get to still say, hey, we still give them aid money, and then the Democrats would want to know how much, and we just say, that doesn't matter. And in all honesty, I think it's fair. Maybe if we actually implemented something like that into the system, maybe Mexico would be less inclined to just let immigrants go through their country and into America. Maybe they would actually do more to stop that. Because at the end of it, who suffers more at the hands of illegal immigration more than anybody? It's not the United States. It's not Mexico. It's not the poor, innocent, criminal, illegal immigrants. It's us as Americans. It's the American citizens who suffer the greatest at unchecked mass illegal immigration. We are the ones that suffer the most because it is our tax dollars that go to funding the wall, funding ICE officers, border patrol agencies, and deportation and immigration agencies. It's our tax dollars that go to giving aid money to Mexico. It's our tax dollars that go to funding illegal immigrant deportations, court costs, feeding housing costs, and everything under the sun. And I think that's how we really fix the problem. One, build a wall, have all those added bonuses onto it. Build the wall, have cameras, motion detectors, military guards, obviously anti-climb features, and please have the alligator pits to fix our immigration system. Charge Mexico for everything that involves illegal immigration. Charge them for everything, from deportation costs to housing, feeding, and clothing their citizens. And fine, I get it, not all illegal immigrants are from Mexico. And that's fine, charge those countries too. Charge Guatemala, charge El Salvador, charge every country that gives us illegal immigrants. I think that's fair and it would be a huge relief to the American taxpayers and maybe, just maybe, it will get Mexico to straighten up and stop allowing their immigrants, their people, immigrants from other countries go to their country into ours. Maybe they would actually do more to stop it if they knew that their precious aid money is at risk. And I honestly think it would be a really good idea to do that. But obviously, it can never work because the liberals, SJW, Democrats, would not have it. They would plant their feet and pout and protest about how bigoted and racist our country is already. And this is another thing that I find ironic, and I'm going to leave you with this. You see, all these illegal immigrants come to this country in the hopes of creating a better life for themselves, or at least that is the idea for when they come here. But then you have a lot of illegal immigrants here in America already protesting against ICE officers and various immigration agencies, calling our president a evil bigot racist for wanting them to do it the legal way instead of doing it the illegal way, wouldn't you think they would tell their relatives, their many, many relatives, that maybe it wouldn't be the best idea to come to a country where it has a racist bigot president and is going to oppress them for being their skin color. But yet we have drones of illegal immigrants coming to this country, coming to a country that is going to oppress them and, and who is led by a racist president. 
But either way, this just goes to show you how messed up our immigration system is, how inefficient our border wall is, and both are in desperate need of extreme change. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.